A small metal ball is suspended from a fixed point by means of a string. So this is going to swing back and forth, kind of like hypnotizing you right there. Okay, uh, but the ball is pulled a small distance to the side and released. That's our first displacement to get the oscillation going. So what are we doing here? We have a graph of x, x this x, okay, how far you are away from the middle equilibrium position. And you go far to the right, to the left, to the right, to the left. That's a simple harmonic motion right here. So what we have to do now is to do some calculations. So they tell us that the motion of the ball is simple harmonic. Use data from figure 4.2 to determine the horizontal acceleration of the ball for a displacement of 2 cm. So I think if we want to start off to find acceleration, any acceleration at all, we need to use the simple harmonic motion equation. So that will be A equals to Hmm, should we include a negative? It really doesn't matter. Uh. We can include a negative or not include a negative also. But anyway, it depends on how we defend, define our system. So I'm going to put a bracket here to say, hey, there's a negative, but I'm not including it in this calculation. So we have W omega squared times X over here. So next step, we need to find what is omega squared. We don't know that. Oh, wait, wait, we have a graph. If we can find the period, we can find the angular frequency omega because omega over here is 2 pi over t or 2 pi f. Ah, yeah, same thing. Lah. So we need to find the t. Okay, so we can say 2 pi over some value. We need to read it from the graph times the displacement 2.0 times 10 negative 2 because cm needs to be converted to meters. Okay, let's go to find the graph. So one complete oscillation. How do we find that one complete oscillation? You kind of choose a point. I think I'll choose this point here. Go down, come up. Okay, kind of end there. So that's one complete oscillation, which is about 0 0.6 from one full cycle, T. All right, let's plug that in. So 0 0.6 over here, 0 0.6. That will be our first thing, and let's calculate the final answer, 2.1932. I could pick, I guess I'll stick with 2SF, 2.2, because all the values given to me are 2SF, so this 2SF right here is fine. All right, then we have a mark. Oh, this is three marks, wow. First one is for final answer. Second one is for usage of the, the, the equation for simple harmonic motion, so this one. And also, 2 pi over t for omega. So these are for equations. Do you know the equations? The third one is for usage of this 0 0.6. You read the t from graph, right? If you did read it, that's one mark there for you. Okay. Now let's go to the final part. Oh, kinetic energy graph. Here we go. The maximum kinetic energy of the ball is Ek. The fastest it can move. Where's the fastest occur again? Ding, 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 carefully. On the axis, sketch a graph to show the variation with time t of the kinetic energy of the ball for the first one second. So this graph is going to be up and down, up and down, up and down. How do you draw? Sometimes it's moving fast, sometimes it's moving slow. You kind of have to know which is which. So maybe I would start off by... Listing out where is kinetic energy maximum, where is kinetic energy minimum. So kinetic energy maximum, when does that happen? That happens when I'm moving the fastest V max at equilibrium position. Okay, then there's also kinetic energy minimum. And that happens when V is zero, uh, pretty much not moving, right? So V is zero, not moving at the maximum displacement. Displacement, also known as amplitude. Uh, so you can kind of say that, or amplitude. <laughs> amplitude position. So we let's, mm, let's see what we can read. Uh, can I take at maximum? Let's see where is the point. I'm going to zoom out like that so we can see a bit on the right and a bit on the left. I'm kind of blocking it. Never mind. This works. 
Okay, first one. Where is x0? What times did that happen? Oh man, this is a hard graph to read. So this will be 0 0.1245, so about roughly 0 0.15 seconds. Where else do we have crossed the axis? Right here. That is 0 0.42445. And one more over here. That will be 0 0.75. Uh-huh. How about minimum? Where is velocity zero? That's when you have the maximum displacement. So that can, that could be any of these points, the orange ones, here, here, and here. These are all the spots where you are at the furthest possible position and you're about to U-turn back. So you will stop moving at those points. So let's list out some of those places. So these are times you are at zero. You stop moving at 0, then at 0 0.3, you stop moving, V0, also because gradient, ah, gradient is 0, ah. V0, which is the gradient, turning point. Why? Because velocity, by the way, is the rate of change of displacement, also known as gradient of this xt graph. So you see that where is the graph gradient flat? So there's one up here, one up here, one up here. So we can write all the points, 0 0.6 and the last one, 0 0.9. Don't throw my head. Now we got our points. Let's go to the graph. So we need to sketch out a graph that kind of passes through all these points. Maximum at all those, minimum at those. I think I'll start with the minimum. It's a bit easier. So minimum is going to pass through here. 0 0.3, 0 0.6, 0 0.9. Maximum points, 0 0.15, 2, 4, 5, somewhere here. 0 0.45, somewhere here. 0 0.7, 2, 4, 5, somewhere here. Okay, I think we, we, are, we are okay. We can go. <laughs> the last one is probably here. Okay, let's... Let's try to draw a graph. So this is a sine square graph. You can try your best to draw it. I will try my best. It's a bit hard to do it on a digital pen. Eh. It's gonna be out of shape already. I can lah. Roughly, roughly. So here the there are essentially three marks, you know, to draw this graph. So it's quite important if you know how to draw it. The first mark is if you draw a sinusoidal shape sinusoidal in only the positive section so only in this part sinusoid means cosine or sine as long as you got that snaky snaky shape up and down up and down okay already the second mark comes from the peaks whatever peak you draw has to be i mean at the maximum ek so you check your peaks got passed through the top at ek okay already la so second mark for peaks at ek And all positive EK. There's no negative energy. It's all positive. The third one comes from your period. So if your period is 0 0.3 from here to here, that is the final mark for the period of oscillation. And you must start at 0. Lah, 0, 0. Then you go. Da, 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 da. Basically, to check whether your points pass through there or not. They didn't really mention that you must have zero all the way. They didn't say you must pass this exact point, so they're a bit grey there. It depends on how strict the examiner is. But make sure you know how to draw this sinusoidal curve for kinetic energy. I think that's it. Okay. So, all in all, know how to draw, how to interpret graphs. Very important, especially sinusoidal graphs. And you'll be okay. So that's all for this question. I'll see you in the next video.